Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for welcoming us into your home for our March Facebook live stream, uh, or wherever you're watching it from, I suppose. Um, we apologize, and we know we're about 10 minutes behind, uh, but we just were getting some last-minute pieces set up with the equipment. Uh, but with that, we're very pleased uh, to be with you tonight, and we're really pleased to be here with Christina Schaefer, the principal of Millville Elementary School. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Schaefer, who's going to talk to us about all things great happening at MES and uh, what we can expect as we, as we round out the rest of the school year uh, between March and June, which is just a short few short months away. Time. Mm -hmm. And so with that, Ms. Schaefer, I'm going to kick it over to you. All right. So um, I kind of broke everything down into the four major buckets that we've talked about all along. Um, the first one being the curriculum. So this year, it's very exciting. We've selected and implemented our new science curriculum, which is STEM Scopes, um, and that is from K through five. So the students are loving the experiments and all the hands-on. Um, and actually, there's a couple of pictures on my slideshow that you can see this is a particular fifth grade lesson, and they had gone out through several increments throughout the day, and they were measuring the sun's movement. So they had used the shadows and they were measuring and they ended up measuring angles and all that in the same lesson. So it was really nice way for them to see um, how the sun moves. Um, we're also working at aligning our math program. We're working with our coach, Mary Vaughn, and she is helping with aligning the assessments, aligning the um, map of the units across the grade levels. She's also helping with our staff and coaching and any materials that they need. So it's been great to have her on board and helping us out with that. Um, and parents, you may have seen a slight dip in some of their assessment scores, which the teachers and I have noted that um, we're trying to align our grading as well. So that we're all on the same page mm -hmm. from Louisville Elementary, JFK, and AFM. So we're all on the same page in how we're grading, and it's not a shock to anyone anymore. So that's and, great. And that's, that's a step that we're taking across the board, not exactly. just with grading, but really making sure that we have those equitable opportunities for kids mm -hmm. um, and that we're approaching the teaching and learning from a similar perspective. Exactly. Yeah. So that way they move from classroom to classroom each year or even within the same year, they have that consistency, which is nice. That's so. really important. Mm -hmm. And I should have mentioned uh, families, are uh, if you're tuning in, uh, those that are returning, by all means, just text uh, or type in your questions. and. Um, I'm going to have them text to me. So if I'm looking down at my phone, it's because I'm we got a question. So <laughs> by all means, uh, send your questions in as we're moving through our, our stream today. Another thing that um, I actually is not on the slideshow, but that we did new this year is um, if you go on our Facebook page, on our website, um, Twitter account, just about anywhere, you'll find our Title I video that we made this year. Just explaining, we know that the Title I meeting was not the most opportune time because we did it during the day. Um, we, have, we realized people work as well, so we made a question and answer session nice. um, with Mrs. Allard and Mrs. Barton, and we answered questions that parents had and um, explained a little bit more about Title I. So that resource is available too. And, and that's up on your webpage? Absolutely. And you know, to that point, um, a big shout out to our families and staff. We've got 450 apps that have been downloaded for our. Awesome new web page. And so we know that uh, some of that is still under construction. And we're still trying to update certain um, certain pages on our web page, but we appreciate everyone's patience as we're doing that. But it's really cool that you've got stuff up there. Exactly. And we've got 450 friends that have our app and are Fantastic. using it regularly. So Excellent. it's great. Um, in addition to our alignment of math and science, we are working on STAR. So we're assessing three times a year. So we've just finished our middle of the year and we'll be sending those reports home to family soon and um, as well as that we're using IXL in the classrooms and some classes right now are finishing up their diagnostic assessments so the teachers can have a better idea of where the students are um, academically and on IXL and then Myon which is a fantastic resource that was introduced this summer um, the staff has really gotten some training and the kids are starting to use it in the classroom and we're they're so excited to do the reading on the device instead of in the books. And the nice thing is it reads to them. So if you don't have a time to read to your child that night, it will read to them. So that's a fantastic resource. So just a question. So I see STAR and IXL, and you know, as a parent, you know, I've heard these terms before. You just explain what they were, which is really helpful. But like, what does this mean for my 
child at home. Like, so if you're a teacher and you're looking at my kids' uh, star information or the work they're doing in IXL, what are we doing with that information? So actually, it brings us to the next point, too, is our teachers are using STAR and IXL to look at student learning and how the weaknesses and strengths, and we are helping to meet the needs by providing interventions or enrichments for students to help them grow in the areas that they may show as an area that they need growth in or as an area that um, they're excelling in. So we're helping provide interventions and extensions for them as well. And same, both STAR and IXL mm -hmm. can use those reports for that. So in, in IXL is more standards based, so it has math standard by standard, as well as reading standard by standard, so that's fantastic. So if you're looking at, uh, say, third grade classroom, mm -hmm. and it's math, you know, mm -hmm. to your point, um, and as a classroom teacher, I'm looking at student A, and I'm seeing all the things that student A can do really well, so I probably won't focus a lot on those things. Right. But I notice that with student A, there's like three or four things that he's really struggling with. Mm -hmm. So I could do some specific work on those skills. Is exactly. that kind of what we're talking exactly. about? Exactly. And you okay. can find some of the resources for the teachers on those pages as well, which is fantastic. That's great. So they can help meet the needs of all the learners that are in front of them. Perfect. Um, so we're, again, going back, looking at student data weekly at our PLC meetings. Um, we have, because we're a smaller grade school, we have multi-grade PLCs. Mm. So we have a grade two two, three, three, four, and then we also have four, four, five, and five, and then we have pre-K and then K and one. So we have multi-grade, which it's, is nice too to see across grade levels. So you can see up. We can see the vertical the line. alignment as to what who's teaching what and where things are missing, so that piece is helping as well. And so just so I understand, so in these PLCs or professional learning communities, you've got a group of teachers, they're sitting together, they're looking at some student, student information, mm -hmm. some student data, and they're talking about how the kids are doing, what they can do different, what they should continue doing because it's working, right. that kind of thing. And we're also looking at um, how to group the students differently for the RTI block that we have built into our schedule. So that way, you know, if you have a couple students that need inferencing and I have three students that need inferencing, we can combine them together and make one group and hit all those students with the same. With the same, same. skill. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Excellent. And then we are learning a um, our ILT team, which instructional leadership team is coming up next. Um, we're looking at a student work protocol, so mm -hmm. we're going to start looking at our student work in, the, in with a different lens and kind of seeing where we can grow and how we can improve what we're doing. So. And so I remember being um, an elementary school teacher, and I had, you know, as a fourth grade teacher, the unit I was doing on fractions, and I would take the student tests and go through, and I would grade, mm -hmm. them, grade them and write feedback on them and that kind of thing. So it sounds like you're doing that and right. is that right so right. the and is the teachers coming together exactly and talking about it together and seeing you know maybe someone has a different strength than someone else and they can say how did you do this right what are you doing i'm stuck on division or fractions can you help me your kids seem to really be getting it so, so looking for those patterns and exactly. trends in student like performance mm -hmm. student outcomes student per yep exactly that makes sense so with the how I did mention our instructional leadership team, so we have some s staff, a variety of staff on our instructional leadership team. Um, and we're spending a lot of time trying to improve teaching and learning um, in our school and focusing on some areas. So we developed a student-friendly focus. Um, well, actually, we developed our instructional focus, and then we developed a student-friendly focus. So it was neat how we did it. So last year, we had students and staff create um, a focus, a student-friendly focus around problem solving, okay. which is just the through line through. I know the middle school is doing problem solving, mm -hmm. the high school is doing problem solving, and I know the JFK AFM complex is doing problem solving. So it just so happened we all worked through that at the same time, yeah. coincidentally, not, <laughs> it was unintentional. Mm -hmm. um, but we can see a trend there, exactly. right, in where we want to take our district in terms of, in terms of its learning to help students become better critical thinkers and problem solvers. Exactly. And, it makes sense. And so we did... Everyone shared their um, focus ideas. We voted on it as a school. That was last year. This year, we did a student-friendly focus. And we had, this, we had students, we had a contest, and they illustrated. And here's an illustration of, and it's also on the slide, that we have these hanging up in all the classrooms. And then we have bigger ones hanging throughout the school. That's so great. that wherever the kids go, they will see them. So, and so a student did this. A student did this. So we, um, the student actually did it on paper, and then we worked with the technology, Mrs. Cardi, and we made it electronically. 
So is. now we have a digital copy of it, and it is on everywhere in our school. So it's and the student is excited because actually yeah. I was talking with him about it today, and he I said, oh, "Do you see your artwork up everywhere?" And he's yeah, it's, he's so <laughs> excited. So um, that was awesome that day he was able to do that as well. And so for our friends at home, what what does this? What's our little sure. this actually look? That looks like me actually. <laughs> is, although I think he has more hair than I have. But what is <laughs> what so, is this guy? Say? So our student friendly focus is based around Mustangs. So mm -hmm. would solving problems remember Mustangs? And it's must understand steps to achieve new goals successfully. So the student you know gave some ideas of what you need. So you need a strong mindset. You need motivation. You need perseverance and preparing. And the number two motivation says, I can do it. And then the perseverance of preparing, the person is excited because they've gone through and solved it. And then the last box says, you can do anything just like me. Oh, that's great. So it was really a neat idea. So I did a great job with that. And that connects right to that problem solving. Exactly. Yeah. And if you'll notice, the next bullet is actually our um, goal for Millville Elementary School is that 100% of all students will sh show at least 50% growth in their ability to problem solve as measured by SGP and STAR and MCAS. So, so that's making sure we've got some accountability to yes, it. Yes, exactly. So the students, you know, were really starting to even also work in the social emotional end of it, mm -hmm. um, which again, we'll talk about later, but they, they're starting to problem solve in a lot more ways. So that's yep. really fun. Um, and then actually on the next slide is our evidence-based instructional strategy, which... Yeah, what's that all about? That's so we have, interesting. we used um, some research and we we selected a strategy that was going to help our students and could help them in multiple areas. So we started with math, figuring math was the most tangible problem-solving thing that people think of. All back to the instructional focus, all right? All back to the instructional focus problem-solving. Problem solving. Exactly. So we... St chose cubes, our staff again, we came up with a few ideas and staff actually selected cubes. So all of these are hanging in every single classroom as well, along with bigger posters in some areas. Um, actually, there's a lot of the bigger ones in the homerooms. So it's just the steps to problem solve. Um, and we have circling key numbers in units, underlining the question, box math action words, evaluate and eliminate, and then show your work and check. And it's actually, fun because even um, other subject areas using it instead of math. So I had um, another specialist share something that they did and they did it a little differently. Pre-K is using it and they're practicing some of just the basic. What does the circle mean? Yeah. So they're doing some in K. So they're doing some of these steps just to get the kids ready for when they get into the older grades. So by the time they leave fifth grade, this should be no problem. So the idea is that we want students to be able to, and you mentioned the social emotional learning parts. I'm sure mm -hmm. that'll come later. It but mm -hmm. whether it's whether it's academic, right? Something that they're learning for the first time. That's mm -hmm. you know English or you know uh, math or what have you, or some of the labs that you right. showed in science, exactly. or whether it's a a challenge that's come up in their social circle. Mm -hmm. We Sounds want them lunch. to be able to, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, exactly. I'm sure there's a lot of those at particular recess time. But we want to make sure that kids are able to kind of pause and think through exactly. a process to help them solve whatever that challenge is that's in front of them. Is that more or less kind Absolutely. of Absolutely. So, and we're hoping that it will carry over. And actually, when I go in <clears> classrooms, <throat> you know, to visit, they, and, and see what they're doing, they're doing it and the mm -hmm. kids are do doing it in all areas now which is great because it wasn't always the case so now to see them actually and the teachers will say okay what do you need to do and they'll say we need to cubes it and they know so um it's great to see that carry over now so yeah we're working on ela next so that's going to be coming up in our april staff meeting we'll select our ela strategy um to help them because mnemonic devices are always a neat way to remember um different things so it helps kids remember that information so, That's great. Um, so we're excited about that. And like I said, we're using it across all grade levels and in a variety of ways in specials, et cetera. So. Well, and I think that the kind of bottom line and something you already said, which is we want students to use it. Right. And so if you're seeing the kids use it, then you know you're doing something right. Right, right. exactly, exactly. So we're working on the ELA one next. So that'll be exciting to see what we come up with. That's great. So now the social emotional piece, the whole child, um, we've implemented Choose Love from K to 12 across our building. And yeah, can you talk a little district. bit about that? Yeah, because we've, we've had other um, of our principals talk a bit about the program mm -hmm. and kind of how they're using it in their school. But can you tell, you know, kind of tell us what is it? Like, what's the gist sure. here? So it was a program that was, that was developed 
Um, and it was, there's four, we built in a fifth one, um, areas that they focus on. So the first one is building a foundation, which we developed. That's how to set up the classroom and get you yeah. know, their environment for learning so that you've got that relationship developed with your students and you're ready to go. And so what are a successful... Exactly. What should a successful learning environment look like? That's great. Um, then we moved on to courage and talking about things that take courage and things that, and I put in the slide, we created a bulletin board in our cafeteria so the students can see this. So the top picture is actually our courage activities. So each week there's a different activity that students do or they have the option to do. Some classes are doing them together and handing me one as a whole to hang up on the bulletin board. Um, so they're displaying their work and it's awesome to see them hand them in. They're so excited to hand all their activities in. I mean, it's simple things such as tell us something nice that you, that tell us something that showed courage that you did. Mm -hmm. And they just put on an index card and share it and it's wonderful. Um, things, what does courage mean to you? 10 words that describe courage, that help you describe courage. That's been great to have them use other things. Um, gratitude is, we just finished up gratitude and we're now into forgiveness. So I, d I do have bulletin boards, pictures of our courage and our gratitude bulletin boards. And we're actually, as you can see in the bottom picture, we're having a problem, a good problem that we're having. We have so much yeah. work. It's it looks like there's a lot of stuff the on the outside there. And yeah. I didn't show it in the top picture, but the top one, it's on the bottom, it's on the sides. Um, so I'm excited to see how full we can get our board for forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then after forgiveness, we have compassion in action. So that will be the end of the year, um, about April-ish, I think the mid, mid to beginning of April um, until the end of the year. So it's like June 12th or 13th. And that is just, I think it's so important that all of our students mm -hmm. across uh, our system are really getting a lot of support. Exactly. And a lot of, you know, um, it's funny because we, as adults, we, I think we all forget a little bit that like <laughs> we were taught these things, exactly. right? So um, we, sometimes you look at our, our youngsters and think like, oh, how come they're not displaying this particular core value? And we, I think we can kind of forget that like someone needs to teach these things. Right. And so while some are, you know, they're all in here, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to kind of cultivate and grow and kind of, you know, kind of pull them out okay. and show the kids the uncover right it. ways. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uncover it. That's a good way to look under the hood, you know, right, and exactly. really help them see what's in there because these things are so important. When we think about our purpose right. of our school system to create happy, healthy, proficient mm -hmm. students ready for college, career, and community, um, that first part is so important. You know, these kind of happy and healthy kids, and we want to make sure that they have these values, you know, in, ingrained mm -hmm. in them. And I really appreciate the fact that. At Millville, the teachers worked uh, along with administration very intentionally to build that foundation mm -hmm. to say, so before we even get into this, right, before we put the stew together, uh, what are the ingredients we're going to need? Right. And kind exactly. of laying those out. I think that's smart yeah. because mm -hmm. you're setting up the classroom for success. And also, I think it helps when the students are feeling comfortable and, and successful in their classroom. I think they're more apt to problem solve through different things. So therefore, yeah. again, this does tie back to our focus of problem solving. Yeah. Um, you know, the whole, them being able to problem solve through all of these, I've actually sat in through several Choose Love lessons, Mrs. Morrow pushes into the classrooms um, and each week. And this is also the first time, in probably since I've been in the building for 18 years, that Mrs. Morrow has actually gone in, going into every single classroom from K through five. So in the past, it's been, you know, optional and, um, yeah. This has been great because you can see the kids talking about it. She'll read books with them. She'll, and all the books are about, you know, the theme. And to hear the kids talk about how, how the character displayed courage or how um, they were, you know, being thankful or has shown gratitude toward yeah. whatever was going on in the book is great because they're using the words. They're, they're able to see it. Um, and that's a great piece. So kudos to Mrs. Morrow for that as well. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you know, the, the relationship building that happens through that just mm -hmm. so, is so important. Right. And I'm sure that all of our classroom teachers are working to mm -hmm. incorporate, you know, these, these values into their regular, you know, instruction with kids and conversation and follow up. And I've seen the big poster that um, I put the I in kind, which, mm -hmm. I, you know, is a little bit different than this, but it's obviously directly connected. And, right. But just like those things, when you walk into Millville Elementary, it feels positive and it mm -hmm. feels kind and it feels warm and um, that's because of all of this right. 
work. And I don't just mean to choose love work, mm-hmm. but I mean, but it's because of the relationships and the, you the know, connections. It, it really is. And I think one of the things that you, your instructional leadership team, and your teachers have done really well is really anchoring that purpose. And that, um, yeah, we want to feel really warm and positive and good, but we're here for teaching and learning, right? right? And that notion of, you know, we only get one shot at March 9th. We've got to, Mm -hmm. you know, teach the best we can and work as hard as we can. And kids need to be ready to learn and absorb that instruction and apply that learning. And so I just, it's it's really nice to see. And having the social emotional piece, you know, together and, and solid, now the learning is open and you're more open and ready to go for your learning. So yeah. That's the, as of for the student end. And we, we talk about that in terms of, you know, minimizing those non-academic barriers. Absolutely. And I've been shifting my language, not saying remove, because mm-hmm. I don't know that you ever really do. You know, there's a lot kind of that goes on in all of our lives. Mm-hmm. But if we can minimize the barriers that prevent us from learning, so we can focus more, you know, I think that's where we're trying to move the kids. Exactly, exactly. Then our last area is community. Um, we have a marvelous community. Um, so a couple of things that we've done is there's been a, a monthly newsletter. Um, January was a January, February newsletter. Um, and we ha- also have had the fire department came in and you'll see the picture on the bottom. So they came in to show students what a firefighter looks like in their gear. So they talked to them as in their real fire, fire attire that didn't have their gear on and then they put their gear on and walked around and showed them what it sounded like with an air pack on oh, wow. and how they talked to them. And they, he actually, Firefighter Steve, or De- Deputy Chief Steve, walked through all of this, the seats and the rows in the auditorium and the kids were able to hear him breathing through the air pack, were able to you know, talk to him, shake his hand. So, so that way, close and personal. Exactly. Yeah. So that way, if, God forbid, we ever have, anybody ever has to you know, have the need of a fireman, they'll understand it's okay. Yeah, they'll be they're, they're, right, they won't be scared. So we do that demonstration for our entire school, which is wonderful because it allows them to see that. Um, we recently did Community Reading Day last Monday, and you were part of that as well. Yeah, that so was we awesome. Had, it was a lot of fun. It's something we do every year. This is Joan's first grade class. Huge shout out. <laughs> Love those kids. They are they are this the best. <laughs> um, and so we had a variety of members from the community reading to our students, which was awesome. The kids love it. They talk about it all for mm-hmm. like the whole week. And it's just an amazing thing. Actually, Representative Soda dropped off some letters and some statehouse pins today for the kids. Oh, wow. So um, Mrs. Faulkner's Thanks for showing got... me up, Rep. Soda, if you're watching this. I didn't drop off letters and pins, but I, I do love the children. <laughs> we gave a shout out. <laughs> um, so that was fun today. Um, and then we had some fifth grade students this year start up a recycling group. That's, um, yeah, that's amazing. So they're really doing a great job because they're very passionate about our earth and making sure we are doing what we can on our end to protect it. So they are recycling. They have bags that they come around to collect the recycling. They bring it home and recycle it home. And um, they're so excited about it. So you can see a couple of our students. We have a multiple of fifth grade students, but that's just a couple of our students um, that, do, that do it. And, and if I can just add to that, because it's so neat that... Um, uh, on, on one on one occasion, I got a letter from, actually, I got a whole stack of letters from the second graders at the complex um, asking me to uh, consider and looking into getting rid of plastic straws, mm-hmm. which we did. Um, and mm-hmm. they were writing uh, persuasive uh, essays, you know, convincing the superintendent <laughs> to get rid of this, these plastic straws. And then I got a letter from uh, one of your fifth grade right. students saying, <laughs> can you please help us figure out this recycling situation? So mm-hmm. uh, I'm really happy that we have such earth conscious right. and we need to be focused on this, mm-hmm. right? We need to have an earth that is you know, thriving right. for this generation and for generations to come. And I love the fact that our BMR elementary kids too with that, our little guys are really focused on this, which is just such an important issue for all of us. And as adults, we can really take their lead to be frank. And so I'm happy that we're trying to kind of solve this recycling issue at Millville Elementary Mm -hmm. because we really do want to help. That's so important. Exactly. So, but good for them. For yeah, I'm very proud of them. And they come a the couple times a week, and we have a bin in the office. They have one. In the, we have one in the nurse's office. We even recycling plastic cups, stuff like that. Um, so it's great. Um, school council. So we are in need of a member. So if anyone's available to come, we did have a member that pulled out. Um, so we could use another parent representative 
or community representative at that. Out. <laughs> so <laughs> let me know. Email me. Um, and our next meeting is March 25th. And we also have MESPA, our parents' organization. Um, they help us with a lot of neat um, events and stuff that we do at school. And their next meeting is next Monday um, at 6.30 in the middle of the library. So there's a lot you can do to get involved. Absolutely. If you don't have a lot of time, that sounds like it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different options. Uh, and take your pick. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and how to involve yourself. Exactly. And actually, with that said, I have mm -hmm. some upcoming events coming up at Millville Elementary School. Um, on Wednesday, we have our preschool lottery. Um, so we will hold a lottery of all those applications that came in. And then students will get slots according to those um, lottery numbers or their lottery position. Our MESPA meeting, like I said, is next week where they always can use volunteers, um, new ideas, fundraising ideas. The students um, have coming up, and you'll see on the 27th, MESPA is sponsoring a family game and raffle night. So um, they do, a, MESPA does a lot of fun, neat things for our students. They help us with the after school clubs. We have a variety of different clubs, and um, they help provide a bunch of different other opportunities. Um, on March 31st, we have our literacy lunch, which I know you've attended several yeah, of those. Yeah, yeah, those are great. So that'll be um, th this month coming up, March 31st, for grades three through five. And Can then, I just share what that is? Absolutely. Do, like, so for those at home that aren't sure what that is, um, I just think this is the coolest thing. So mm -hmm. the third through fifth graders give up their uh, some of their free time, yep. and they all read the same book. I think it was Wrinkle in Time was the mm -hmm. last one. That was the last one, yes. Um, and they do this, it's like going to Barnes and Nobles and hanging out, you know, with you would think would be like a bunch of college kids talking about <laughs> something they've read. And they get together at the end, and they have lunch, um, mm -hmm. And they talk about the book. They talk about the themes and the characters and how they developed. And they share their projects, which they do a project. To it's go amazing. With they do this, yeah, this big project, and it's all in their own their own time. time. They're it, reading I mean, the book at home. Um, they do they do it during their lunch it's time so awesome. instead of hanging out with their peers. They do hang out with their peers, but they do some some educational talk with um, you know Mrs. Allard um, about the books that they're reading. So and if you great. listen to them talk about the, it's it's just <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, it's, I, yeah. it's sometimes, you know, you laugh with them, you cry with them. It's, right. you know, it's, it's exactly. yeah, it gets that deep. I mean, it's pretty, <laughs> it's, awesome. it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, great exactly. kids. And then um, April 15th, we have a STEAM museum, that's during the school day, um, and that is sponsored by NESPA and the Millville Cultural Council. So we're excited to have the STEAM museum so the students can actually go down small groups of, I believe it's no more than 60, and try a bunch of different STEAM activities. Um, so we have an outside group coming in for that. So busy couple of weeks going on yeah, here. Yeah, March Madness. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Oh, and actually speaking of March Madness, we do have in the classroom some a book, um, March Madness. So they, each classroom has a set of books, and then they have to pick their favorite out of the books. So we have a bracket up on our wall, wall so the classes can see which ones they like the best. That's so. great. Mm -hmm. So a lot of just amazing things going on at Millville. And I and it sounds to me, Ms. Schaefer, that you and your staff, um, like the rest of our schools, are mm -hmm. very focused on meeting the purpose of our district, which is those happy, healthy, proficient kids mm -hmm. ready for college, career, and community. Exactly. Do we have any questions from uh, anybody that might be tuning in here? I haven't seen anything come through yet, but it must be just because you're I doing just such a thorough, thorough job. job. <laughs> Um, and so I, I guess at this point we can wrap up. There's a couple minutes left, but um, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody again, whether you are watching this live or kind of tuning in, tuning out, or whether you'll watch the video later. Um, we have what we think and, and feel mm -hmm. are the best schools, second to none. Um, and we really appreciate you tuning in to hear about them mm -hmm. and being a part of our school community. Um, with that, um, on Thursday, March 12th, that's this Thursday, we do have our public uh, budget hearing for the fiscal year 21 budget. Mm -hmm. And so, as you know, we align our fiscal resources, our money, to our district blueprint for improvement. So we put our money where the need is. Uh, and so I want to encourage everybody to, to come on out and check out um, the public hearing, um, say a few words. And, of course, we'll be doing a budget video uh, for those at home as well that we'll be sending out on every social media platform and the principals will. Um, so I guess with that, do you have anything right. else, Ms. Shaver? No.
And if you want to join school council, yeah. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, we'll wrap up. And thanks so much for being here. It was great uh, taking the time to hear about the school. And thanks so much for tuning in at home. Thank you. Take care. Introducing the brand new app for Blackstone Millville Regional School District on Android and iPhone. It's everything BMR in your pocket. This is the home screen. Tap the school's icon in the top right or swipe left to select a specific school. Tap the three horizontal lines in the top left or swipe right to see all the menu items. To turn on push notifications, tap Settings and select Turn on Notifications. The Events section shows a list of all events throughout the district. You can use this button to add an event to your calendar, or tap here to share the event with friends and family. Live Feed is where you'll find updates from administration about what's going on in the district right now. Whether that's celebrating a student's success or reminding you about an upcoming deadline. Search Blackstone Millville Schools in the App Store or Play Store to explore the app for yourself. It's everything BMR in your pocket.